Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to another lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you about tag questions. But before we begin the lesson, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you find the lesson useful and informative. Thank you. Now, let us begin. To be able to use any grammar correctly, it is important that you understand the rules. Once you understand the rules, then it becomes really, really simple to use that particular grammar in a sentence for a test or in your day-to-day -day life. So, let us look at the rules that we should remember when we use or formulate tag questions. Rule number one. Use tag questions after a sentence to ask if someone agrees with you about something. So, we normally use tag questions to ask someone if they agree with us about something. And in that case, we use the tag question after a sentence in which you have asked somebody about or you have told somebody about something. Let's look at example one on the right to apply that particular rule. We want to know how do we ap apply rule number one. Example 1a. He can swim well. Can't he? So you have told someone that he can swim well. And then you want to ask that someone if they agree with you about it. If they have exactly the same opinion as you do. So then you use a tag question. He can swim well. Can't he? So the tag question is, can't he? B. She cooks the best meals. Doesn't she? Example C. My dog is the best. Isn't it? Jack should go to bed now, shouldn't he? So if you look at all those examples, we are beginning with a sentence and in that sentence, you're telling somebody something about someone or maybe yourself. And then to ask if someone agrees with you about what you have just told them, you use a tag question. So a tag question helps you to find out if someone agrees with you about something or not. Let us move on to rule number two. In a tag question, you repeat, okay? So whenever you formulate a tag question, you repeat A, a form of the verb to be. Because the question we should be asking ourselves at this point is, how do you formulate 
a tag question. How do you write one? How do you create one? How do you do it? So, to create a tag question, you repeat a, a form of the verb to be. And what does the, the verb to be mean? It means the use of am, are, is, was, where, and so on. So, in a tag question, you have to repeat the verb to be. Now, let us look at example 2a. You are sick. So, that is the sentence. Remember rule number one. First, you formulate a sentence in which you're informing somebody about something. And then after that, you formulate or you create a tag question to ask if someone agrees with you about something. So, you are sick. Now, you want to ask the person if they agree with you that they're sick or not. You are sick, aren't you? So, we use, we repeat the verb to be are. In the first part of the sentence, we have the verb to be are. And to formulate the tag question, we repeat that verb to be are and then we add n t and the apostrophe. You are sick, aren't you? So, you have repeated the verb to be are. You have used the verb to be are to formulate your question. You are beginning your question tag with R and then you add N apostrophe T. The second example in 2A. He was your best friend, wasn't he? So once more in that sentence, you have used the verb to be was to formulate your tag question and you have simply done that by beginning your tag question with was and then n apostrophe t and you notice in that case we repeat the personal pronoun we repeat the pronoun you are sick aren't you so we repeat you he was your best friend wasn't he so he comes at the end of the sentence okay so one of the ways in which you can formulate a tag question is by repeating a form of the verb to be that is rule number two a Rule number two B. In a tag question, you repeat the model or auxiliary verb. And some examples of model or auxiliary verbs are can, could, must, might, may, and should. If you want to know more about model or auxiliary verbs, what they, what they are, how we use them. I have uploaded a video about modal verbs. Feel free to have a look at that video. And familiar, familiarize yourself with modal or auxiliary verbs. Now, let us continue. So, in a tag question, you repeat the model or auxiliary verb. Look at examples 
to be on the right. He could talk when he was five years old, couldn't he? He could talk when he was five years old. So that is what you are informing or telling somebody. And you want to know whether that is, they agree with you, whether that is the case, whether he was able to speak when he was five years old. He could talk when he was five years old, couldn't he? So, in the first sentence, you have the modal verb could. To formulate the tag question for that sentence, you have simply begun your sentence with could and then you add N apostrophe T. And the personal pronoun he comes again at the end. He could talk when he was five years old, couldn't he? So he starts the sentence and ends the sentence. The next example, she can swim well. She can swim well. Can't she? In that sentence, we have the modal verb can. And to ask the tag question, we begin the sentence with can. And then you add the apostrophe and T. And we have she. So she begins the sentence and ends the sentence. The next example, Peter must call the doctor. Mustn't he? Peter must call the doctor. Mustn't he? We have in that sentence the modal auxiliary must. Okay? And we are beginning our tag question with must. Then you add N and then you have an apostrophe and then T. And in this case, Peter is the name of a boy. So, instead of ending the sentence with Peter, when it comes to people's names, then you have to use the appropriate personal pronoun for their gender. So, that's why we are using he. We cannot say, Peter must call the doctor. Mustn't Peter? No. That is not correct. So whenever you have people's names, then you have to end your tag question with the appropriate personal pronoun for their gender. If that sentence was, my grandmother must call the doctor. Mustn't she? My grandmother must call the doctor. Mustn't she? Because my grandmother is a woman and a woman is she. So I would have to end the sentence with she. So remember that. That is really important. Okay. So. Before we move to rule number 2C, remember, in a tag question, you repeat the verb to be or the modal verb. Okay? Rule number 2C. In sentences which do not have the verb form to be or a modal verb, so, if you have a sentence, remember rule number one. We said that you use tag questions after a sentence. So, first you formulate a question and then after that you ask a tag question. And if the sentence has the form of the verb to be, then you begin your tag question by repeating the verb to be. That was rule number 2A. And if your sentence 
begins or it has a model, verb, then you begin your tag question with the model, verb. However, if your sentence does not have the verb to be and it does not have a modal verb, then you use do, does, or did to begin your tag question. I repeat, if your sentence does not have the verb to be or a modal verb, then you begin your tag question with do, does, or did. Now, how do you do that? Let us look at example 2C on the right. You hate homework, don't you? So if you look at that sentence, you hate homework, it does not have the verb to be and it does not have a modal verb. And that is why we are beginning the tag question with don't or rather do. You hate homework, don't you? So you simply have do, then you have N, and then you have apostrophe, and then T, and then you have U. So U begins the sentence and it ends the sentence. The next example, he plays football daily. He plays football daily. In that sentence, you don't have the verb to be, but also you don't have a modal verb. So, you have to begin your tag question with does. That is rule number 2C. So, you have does and then you have N and then you have an apostrophe T. And he begins the sentence and it ends the sentence. The next example, Sarah passed her exams. Sarah passed her exams, didn't she? So, once more in that first sentence, you do not have the verb to be, but also you do not have a modal verb. So, what should you do? You have to begin your tag question with did plus n and then you have the apostrophe t and this time sarah is a girl so you have to use the correct pronoun for sarah and that is she remember what we said earlier on when you have the name of a person in the first part of the sentence then at the end of your tag question, you have to use the correct pronoun, which should match the gender of the person. Sarah is a girl, so we use she. We cannot say Sarah passed her exams. Didn't Sarah? No, that is wrong. So we have to replace Sarah with she. Okay? Let us move on to rule number three. If the sentence has the words let us, if the sentence has the words let us, then the tag question should always begin with shall. If the tag sentence, remember what we said, rule number one, okay? Use tag questions after a sentence to ask if someone agrees with you about something. So first, you formulate a sentence. And then after that, you ask a tag question. But if the sentence that you have formulated 
or you have made, if it has the words, let us. Then, your tag question must begin with shall. So, let us look at example three. Let us forget all about it. Let us forget all about it. Shall we? And the reason is that sentence has begins with let us. So when it comes to formulating the tag question, we must begin with she. And then we have to use the correct pronoun. So us is many people and it becomes we, also referring to many people. Okay? For example, just to give you a few more examples. Let us pray. Shall we? Let us begin cooking. Shall we? Let us begin the lesson. Shall we? Okay. Rule number four. If the sentence is negative, then the tag question must be positive. If the first part of your sentence is negative, which means it has N T, then the tag question must be positive, which means it must not have N T. So negative means it has N T. And positive means it does not have NT. Let us see some examples of how to apply that rule. Example four. He can't swim well. Can he? He can't swim well. Can he? Can't is negative because it has an apostrophe T. And because of that, you have to begin your tag question with can and not can't because it has to always be negative and positive. It's like a little bit of physics. So, negative and positive. You can never have negative and negative or positive and positive. So, we cannot say he can swim well. Can he? No. One of them has to be positive and the other one has to be negative. So you can say, he can swim well, can he? You can also say, he can swim well, he can swim well, can't he? He can swim well, can't he? Look at the next example. They weren't interested, were they? They weren't interested were they so weren't is positive oh sorry weren't is negative because it has n t and were is positive because it does not have n t so remember that rule rule number five if the sentence is positive, then the tag question must be negative. So that is the opposite. He is trying, isn't he? He is trying, isn't he? Is is positive. So you have to begin your tag question with neg a negative uh, beginning. So isn't he? He is trying is is positive and then the tag question must begin with is plus n apostrophe t so that we have is and then isn't positive and negative and the last example is a very interesting one you hate homework don't you now you hate homework is already negative you hate homework that is negative. 
you hate homework. However, we don't have a word we don't remember that is example the last example is 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 an example of rule number c in sentences which do not have the verb form to be or a modal verb use do does or did or did so in that case the first part of the sentence does not have an auxiliary or a modal verb it does not have an auxiliary or the verb to be so you have to always end it with a negative you always have to begin the tag question with a negative uh, word okay so i repeat if your tag question if your sentence Okay, that is rule number 2C. In sentences which do not have the verb form to be or a modal verb, so sentences which you have to begin uh, the tag question with do, does, or did, then you must always remember that the tag question must be negative. The tag question must be always negative in sentences which do not have the verb form to be or a modal verb. So if you look at the last example, you hate homework. In that sentence, we don't have the verb form to be and we also do not have a modal verb. So the tag question must always be negative. You hate homework, don't you? Okay, look at examples 2C. You hate homework, don't you? He plays football daily, doesn't he? So, doesn't he? That tag question is negative because the sentence does not have the verb to be or a modal verb. The next sentence, Sarah passed her exams. Sarah passed her exams, didn't she? So once more, Sarah passed her exams. In that sentence, we don't have the verb to be and also we don't have a modal verb. So the tag question must be negative. Did plus N apostrophe T. But in sentences which have the verb to be and in sentences which have a modal verb, then rule number four and rule number five apply. If the sentence is negative, then the tag question must be positive. And if the sentence is positive, then the tag question must be negative. Now, this brings me to the end of this lesson. Remember, we use tag questions to ask someone if they agree with us. You now know the different rules that will help you to construct tag questions correctly. If you found this video useful, and informative if you think that you learned something new through this video please subscribe to the channel give this video a thumbs up and share the video with your family and friends and anybody else who may need it remember sharing is caring that, that's why I'm sharing this video with you, because I care. Thank you very much and see you in our next lesson. Bye-bye.